Hello, welcome to White Threads Floss Tube number 97. Thanks so much for joining me today. Two floss tubes ago, I showed you um, a cushion, which was one of my first embroideries that I ever did. And I think I mentioned in that video that I'd done hardanger for the first time at school. Anyway, if I didn't mention it, I'm going to tell you. I did hardanger for the first time at school, and this was in year 10, and... Uh, it was when it was elective by that stage, so year seven, grade seven to some of you. Uh, textiles and design was um, a compulsory subject because in year seven we all had to do bits of everything to give us a wide range of experiences. And then I think from year eight onwards we were allowed to choose it as an elective and I did. Um, I then didn't did it from year eight to year ten and I chose not to do it for year 11 and 12 if I made that choice again. Now I would probably choose to do it, but I didn't know how my life was going to turn out. I did art instead. I loved, I loved art, so, you know, it wasn't a bad thing. Um, so in year 10, we had to do a small sample of cross stitch, a small sample of hardanger. So these are just like little pieces. Um, a small sample of black work and a small sample of shadow embroidery. And then we had to choose one of those four styles of embroidery and do a larger piece. And I chose to do hardanger. Um, so my mum took me to a store that wasn't very far away and we bought the things that I needed for my project. So the first thing we got was um, try and get this on screen. Um, this book called Traditional Hardanger Embroidery. It's a Priscilla book. Um, it was published a long time ago. Let me check. Oh, no, okay. First published in 1985. Oh, but it is an unabridged and unaltered publication of the first work published by Priscilla Publishing in 1924. So, yeah, it is quite an old book. Um, and I looked through this book and decided that I would make, of course I'm probably not looking at the right page, am I? This embroidery here. But that didn't really seem big enough to me. So I tripled it. Instead of just doing one, I did one, two, three. Um, and so one, two, three and it made it quite large. So I thought that I would show that to you today. Now I've just pulled it out of uh, the box that it's been stored in, which has acid-free tissue in it. It's an acid-free box. And it's interesting that it's just coloring quite badly. Um, but, you know, this was done more than 30 years ago, so it's a while. Um, so, as you can see, it's quite large. Right, so this was my first Hardanger project ever, and it's so big I can't even fit it on the screen. Let's see if I can move backwards a bit and get it in. Oh, still not all. <laughs> right, it's big, right? We got that? Yeah. Um, so I did adapt the de design somewhat. Um, the center of the design in this one has a big uh, thing in the middle that I didn't do. I did mine differently. Um, so I've just got, sorry, trying to get this on the screen. I'm very, really not very good at that. That's the center of mine there, which is a lot more simplified. Um, but it repeats the motifs that are out at the edge with the, um, well, I now know that it's not a star. It's an eight petaled rose. These are the things you learn when you actually go to Norway and research the embroidery there. So this was my first Hardanger piece. Now I'm pretty sure that my textiles and design teacher, Miss Gurney, thought that I'd bitten off more than I could chew. And I probably wondered that myself at some stages as well. But I come from a family. My father has a can-do attitude. He has always just been willing to attempt things in his life. And because my dad's like that, I've had that modeled for me as I grew up. And so that's what I assumed too. If something needed to be done, well, why not do it? Um, learn the skills and get it done. So, yeah, it was huge, um, but I did it and I loved it. Um, at the time, I my understanding was that 
hard anger should be done on hard anger fabric so that was the fabric that my mother bought for me um, because we didn't know any better we didn't know that hard anger fabric was not actually the traditionally used fabric that linen was so this is on 22 count um, Oslo or hard anger fabric um, and I wouldn't choose to use a fabric that's this coarse anymore but I did at the time and it's a starting point and I'm really pleased that I had that opportunity to do that and it was just a wonderful thing to do I loved doing it and I'm really grateful that I had the opportunity to do that at school because I know that these days people don't get to do hard anger at school and I did get to so I'm really pleased about that now when I was looking in the box to find that I also found this piece here which was the first um, hard anger I think that I had published in a magazine so this was my first real design that I'd come up with myself um, and I think it was published in embroidery and cross stitch magazine and it was known I think as Northern Star um, so that's the first design I had published you can see it's um, discoloring quite a lot as well because it was actually white on white as well originally um, and so that's the first piece that I ever had awareness that someone on the other side of the world had stitched it um, and Shay Toner if you're watching that was you you were the first person that I ever knew that made one of these one of my designs somewhere else and so I'll never forget the fact that that was you and I know that you're still around um, watching my videos and reading my blog occasionally so thank you Shay it was a lovely thing that you did for me by being the first one so they were just a couple of embroideries that I wanted to show you today from my dim dark past um, and I hope that that was enjoyable for you and I will see you next time thank you so much for joining me if you haven't yet subscribed please do and hit the bell so that you get notified when there's a new video that comes up bye <music>